Hi, it's Greg, WJ6F. Today's video, we're going to be talking about the GT5R Pro from Baofeng, and we'll get to it right after this. The items that come in the box, you get the charger, instruction manual, belt clip, 1800 milliamp hour battery, wrist strap, antenna, the mic earpiece, and the radio. At the time of filming this video, this radio is currently going for $27.99 on the Baofeng website. Now one of the things, they're saying it's a five watt high power, and they show over here on the right that in quote unquote open area, you can get up to seven miles, two to four miles in a suburban area, and one to two miles in an urban area. Well, that's gonna be depend on how open. I mean, they show a mountain in their open area, not sure that that's gonna work very well. However, this radio will work with all the current UV5R accessories. If you have a programming cable, if you have different chargers, the extended battery, different antennas, the hand mic, they'll all work just fine in here. Some of the things they're saying, as usual, it has 128 memory, multi-band receiver. You can lock the keypad. It has better battery conservation. Right here, they're talking about the multi-band version. And they're saying it supports UHF, VHF, dual band transmission, and a wide range for reception. For reception, you can get 136 to 174 megahertz, 400 to 520, 76 to 108, which is gonna be your commercial FM bands. 108 to 136 megahertz, 200 to 260, 350 to 390, and NOAA. Here they show it again, what you get on the receiving side. And then for the US, for transmit, you have 144 to 148 and 420 to 450. If you have the European version, you can get 144 to 146, 430 to 440. They show it's in the box, and that depends on what kind of set you get. And then different accessories you can get, different batteries, programming cables, etc. I'm going to take a look around this radio, starting with the left side. Center, you have your push to talk button. Right below it, you press that one once quick, you get the flashlight. Push it again, you get the strobe, and again, turns it off. Press and hold for monitor. The orange button on the top side, press it once quickly, you get the commercial FM stations. Push it again to turn it off. Press and hold, and you get the alarm. Press it again to turn that off. On the top, obviously you have your flashlight, your volume and power knob, the antenna. On the right side, this is where you'd plug in programming cables or microphone. It also has a little loop for the wrist strap. Now on the front, this is for switching back and forth between VFO and memory. Channel A and B, this is your transmit receive indicator light. This allows you to select different bands, exiting out of the menu, going up and down in the menu, going into the menu. And then some of these are quick keys to get you into different menu items like say power for example. You can use the pound key over here or hashtag whatever they call it this week for locking the keys and the back at the top is how you release the battery just push it in and the battery comes out okay we're going to be listening to the air band for a second 121.300 that's the SNA airport also known as John Wayne in Santa Ana Uh, I'd like to head to John Wayne. 
I'm going to show you how to program a repeater and a simplex frequency into this radio. It's actually quite simple. First thing you're going to do, switch to VFO. You can tell we're in memory because you can see the memory channels right here. This is 127 right here on the bottom. Press this orange button, switches you to VFO. Enter the frequency. So for simplex, we're going to do 146520. Then you go into menu. Now we don't need to worry about the CTCSS or any of that stuff. So we're going to kind of jump ahead and go right to 27. And that gets us to the memory channel save. Press on menu, drops it down to the number. And you can press and hold to go faster. And we're going to go to, yeah, we went a little too far. And then once you find the one you want, for example, we're using number two. Click on it, it locks it in. Once you're done, exit out and then switch back to VFO and you can see number two right there and 146520. And a program a repeater. Again, you're gonna go to VFO, enter the frequency you want, 145220. Go to menu and you're going to go to item number 13. That's where you're going to set the CTCSS code. In this case, we want 103.5. Hit menu. And again, you can press and hold to get it through the different ones faster. Press menu again to lock it in. Then we're going to go to 25. And that's where we do our shift. And this one has a negative or minus. Hit menu again to lock it in. Go up one to 26. And we're gonna do the offset, which since this is two meters, we're gonna do 0. 0.6. Lock it in. And then go up one more to 27 and choose where you want it saved and we're gonna use 15. So again, you can hold it to go through the numbers quicker. And then lock it in. Once you're done with all that, exit out. Go back into memory. And you can see we did save it into 15. Now, unfortunately, I cannot raise the repeater because we had a fire this past week and I'm not sure if just their generator died or if the whole repeater got torched. Hopefully it will be up and running soon. Now we're going to take a look at the power on this radio. It's supposed to be 5 watts per the website and the instruction manual. The number you want to pay attention to is this number right here. These large numbers, that's the SWR meter. Don't worry about it. It's going into a dummy load. Again, these are the numbers that will show the power. We're going to start with 440 or 70 centimeter on low power. And we're at 1.3 watts. Let's jump up to 2 meters. I have it set to 146.52. Again, low power. You can see the little L in the screen. And we're at 1.7 watts. Now we're going to switch to high power. And again, starting with 70 centimeter. And we're at 4 watts. Should be 5 watts. Difference between 5 watts and 4 watts is not a huge amount but I personally would still like it to be closer to five. Now we'll check two meters and again, four watts. Now we're gonna check the spectral purity of this radio. As you can see on band A, I have it set for 146.52. It's also set to low power. I'm gonna give it a second to get itself all figured out. 
It looks like Delta Marker 3 is disappearing, which is good. Will 2 do the same? It does not look like it. That one should be negative 40 below marker 1. Plus, it is also not below the 25 microwatt blue line, which makes this a fail. What does that mean? It means it's not legal for use on the amateur bands. There's a lot of potential for this radio. It just needs to be cleaned up a little. As you heard, the when we were on the air band, it didn't sound all that great, but I don't necessarily blame the radio for that since the airport I was listening to is 15 miles away from my house. What might help is if you buy the set that comes with a longer antenna and the programming cable. I really appreciate you taking the time to watch this video. If you have any comments, questions, or concerns, please leave them in the comment section below. If you haven't done so already, please subscribe and don't forget to click on the bell so you'll be notified each time I upload a video. If you'd like to help support the channel, there is a Patreon link in the description area. And while you're here, why don't you check out one of these other videos. And again, thanks for watching.